Hi all, welcome back. We ended the last video with this slide of anabolic reactions and catabolic reactions and the thought that cells can perform catabolic reactions to liberate energy that will then drive energy requiring anabolic reactions. Well, inherent in this coupling of catabolic and anabolic reactions is the idea that energy can be converted from one molecule to another or, more generally, from one form to another. For example, we can eat an ice cream cone with sugary sprinkles. After we digest that food, we can then convert the energy from those sugars and fats into the movement of our muscles. Well, that allows the boys in the lower left photo to ride their bikes. Those boys also exhibit the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that when energy is converted from one form to another, that conversion is never 100% efficient. Some energy is always given off in less usable forms. When the boys convert chemical energy in their bodies to move their muscles that help them ride their bikes, what are some examples of the less usable forms of energy that the second law says they must produce? Well, if you set the heat up, you're right. Heat is a form of energy that disperses into space. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy is neither created nor destroyed. If that's the case, what happened to the heat energy that those boys produced if they rode their bikes, let's say, the other day? When they produced heat energy, that heat energy left their bodies and caused molecules in the atmosphere around them to move faster. Those gas molecules slammed into other gas molecules and transferred some energy to them. And those secondary gas molecules then moved faster and slammed into yet more gas molecules. Those moved a little faster and slammed into even more gas molecules, and so on and so on. That is still going on today from the heat energy the boys produced the other day when they rode their bikes. And the first law says that this will keep going on and on, forever. The picture on the left shows the bicycle boys converting chemical energy into kinetic, energy of movement. The picture on the right shows a plant converting sunlight energy into chemical energy. This makes it seem like chemical energy is different than kinetic energy, but chemical energy is actually kinetic. What is moving in the sugar and fat molecules of the ice cream and sprinkles? If you said electrons, good for you. Electrons express energy as they orbit the atomic nuclei. We can energize and de-energize electrons by making them move faster and farther or slower and nearer. We'll see this as we go along. Another way we can categorize chemical reactions is by defining endergonic and exergonic reactions. Endergonic reactions require energy. Exergonic reactions liberate energy. Are anabolic reactions typically endergonic or exergonic? Anabolic reactions are building reactions. Building things usually requires energy. So anabolic reactions are usually endergonic. This set of pictures comes from the textbook. They're supposed to show endergonic reactions and exergonic reactions. <laughs> I have no good idea which is which. I can think of both exergonic and endergonic reactions going on in each one of those pictures. This graph is a little bit more specific in the energy conversions than the previous picture. This is an energy gra graph of a chemical reaction. On the left side of the horizontal axis are the reactants. The products of the reaction are shown on the right side of the horizontal axis. The vertical axis shows energy. The higher up you are on the vertical axis, the more energy is contained in those chemicals. The purple curve shows the energetics of a chemical reaction. The reactants start at a fairly low energy state. They're low on the vertical axis. In order for those reactants to react, they have to ascend a pretty steep energy hump. In the end, the energy in the system drops to a level stored in the products. Do the products store more or less energy than the reactants? The products here are higher up than the reactants, so the products store more energy than do the reactants. And the difference in the energy is labeled as delta G in the picture. Is this an endergonic or exergonic reaction? This 
is an endergonic reaction because the products store more energy than the reactants. So draw a graph of an exergonic reaction. If you drew something like this, you got it right. The activation energy is the energy hump that the reactants must ascend in order for the reaction to proceed. For any pair of relatively stable reactant molecules, they won't react with one another unless energy is added to the system. That energy will cause those molecules to move fast enough that they'll collide with one another with enough force that they will react. The red curve shows the same chemical reaction, the same reactants and products. In this situation, the activation energy is lower. Lowering the activation energy would allow this reaction to occur more often in a lower energy environment than the original purple version of the reaction. In the next video, we'll discuss enzymes, cellular tools that have specific function of lowering the activation energy of specific chemical reactions.